uh, my therapist at the time, brilliant guy, gave me this such a simple, and you probably may, may have already heard this technique, uh, audience members. I know, Lisa, you have for sure, it, which is you treat yourself like your best friend or mm -hmm. your own child, or you just think of a dynamic in your life that you have unconditional love for. So whether you have a, a your own a child, a hypothetical child, a best friend, a niece or a nephew, whatever grandparent, whatever that is, uh, whatever that relationship that's the dearest to you, use that and then put yourself in that in that role. So let's just use your child as an example. Like, would you speak to your child the way you speak to yourself? <laughs> and I know for myself, you know, a, a couple of years ago. The answer would have been like, oh, dear Lord, <laughs> like I'm such a, I'm horrendously cruel to myself. Therefore, I, I'm saying the most hor horrible things to my child, you know? And so once you flip that mentality and that perspective and you view yourself in that light of, well, would you speak to your best friend that way? Would you speak to your child that way? And, you know, whatever the answer is, that's the answer you want to then move into. Well, then don't speak to yourself that way. Because you are that child, you are that best friend. And once you actually cultivate a relationship with yourself, you know, that is like, yeah, I am my best friend. And, you know, and I remember when I was going through this, where I didn't really fully believe that, but then time continues to go on and my practices of self-love, like we were just talking about, I would just keep doing them, not necessarily believing them all the time, but certainly doing them. And then now, I, I, as we're talking on this podcast, I'm able to reflect and realize, wow, my self-talk is completely transformed because I would never dream of saying those horrible things to myself anymore. Right. You know, like it, it hurts. I actually like feel like I I've, I've said them sometimes because they just, in a moment, I'm like, oh, you idiot. You know, if I'm, I parked wrong or something silly like that, right? It comes out. And then I immediately go like, oh, I mean... It's all right, buddy. You're doing great. It's <laughs> right. doing the best you can. I'm so, so sorry. sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. I know. I mean, the thought of me saying something like to my son, like "You're an idiot," or you know, "What is wrong with you?" It is. I mean, that feels so foreign to me, and the fact that we say that to ourselves subconsciously all the time, and maybe in reality, like with you. Like that, that is, that's the pause button. D hit the yeah. pause button <laughs> as quickly as possible and sit back and just, you know, again, without judgment, forgive. You know what? I didn't mean to say that to you, Lisa, you are awesome. I didn't mean to say that to you. That, that, um, that came out wrong. What I really mean to say is. You're doing a great job and you keep going and you are supported and you are loved and you are cherished and everything's going to be okay. Now, when we receive that from someone that we love, that just changes everything, doesn't it? And, but we don't always have the opportunity to have that. But when we do that to ourselves, it's the warm blanket. Yeah, you don't have control about you don't have control over much in this reality, but you definitely have control over how you react and how you speak to yourself, you know, right. and others, of course, but we're focusing on the self right now. And we have the opportunity to completely shift that. Um, again, everything on the external is the external, you know, it is what it is, but the internal is yeah. I don't know about that. I'm going to, I'm going to say that the external is a mere reflection of what our thoughts are. We talked about this last week and we get to create our reality. We get to create that reality. What did I, I say earlier? I said something earlier that, um, and sorry, Chris, cause you know, I, I like to challenge this. It's like, oh, that's great. Uh, Nothing can be received until a place is prepared for it to enter. Last week, we talked about the simulator. That if everything that we create in our micro consciousness is being reflected out 
in our experiences than I think. And then there's also the collective simulator. Then I think that life doesn't have to be, it is what it is. Life can be what we make it to be. And that is another reason why it's so important to have some level of practice and some level of commitment to our own self-awareness because the pebbles that I were, was creating in my life five or six or 10 years ago, or even a year ago, are totally different pebbles than what I'm putting in the pond called my life. Because the ripples are what I am most interested in, in experiencing. And if I don't like what I am not, what I'm experiencing, then I have to go back as the chemist, as the alchemist, as the, you know, as the gardener of my own life <laughs> and look to see, am I planting seeds or am I planting weeds? What's happening? That's taking complete responsibility. We don't have control over what other people are doing, but if our experiences are a reflection in the positive of what our thoughts are, if they're in alignment, then we're, we're on the right path. 